Hi, today I'm going to do a film all about wearing red lipstick. I believe that red lips can look absolutely amazing on everyone. It's just a case of finding the right texture and the right sort of shade that, that suits you. And although it's traditionally classically worn with a little black dress or a co for a cocktail party or for an evening event, I personally love red lips most when they're slightly out of context. So maybe you're wearing a sweater or a grey t-shirt and a pair of jeans shopping on a Saturday afternoon and your makeup's pretty natural and then you just have this wonderful red mouth and I think that is just the ultimate in glamour. I just think it looks so sort of throw away and amazing and just beyond fabulous so I do love red lips for an evening and for an event but I just absolutely adore them when you're quite casual so there are lots of rules that you re read about sort of red lips and which shade you should wear and for this hair color or whatever um and there is, I'm not a big believer in makeup rules necessarily, but there is a little bit of truth behind some of that. But like, every, you know, like all rules, there are exceptions in every case as well. So I'm going just to go through some of my favourite reds from each different category and talk about which skin tone they are best for. So I'm going to start with the warm orange toned reds and I've got three of my favourites really. And classically, I think that these types of yellow, orangey reds do work better with yellow-based skin tones. So if your skin is olive or just has a lot of yellow in it naturally, they do just sit together better. It's just less jarring as if you put, uh, you know, if you put it on a very cool tone, very pink skin, it just, mm -mm, it's off and it doesn't quite work. There are obviously exceptions to that. As myself, for example, I have a lot of red in my skin, but by the time I've done my foundation, I tend to match my foundation with my more yellowy areas. So by the time my foundation's done, I've neutralized all the red in my skin. So bear that in mind as well. It needs to match the skin, you know, the color of your skin once your foundation is on, because I think most people that have a lot of red often neutralize it. So the first of the orangey reds is a classic and this is the Lady Danger by MAC and um, this is just an absolute classic. It's a matte texture and it's very very long lasting and it looks amazing on olive toned skin. It looks amazing on neutral, I mean I wear this one a lot. Once I've taken all the red out of my skin and sort of neutralized it, it's one that I personally really love. Next one is Rouge d'Armani and this is 401 and this is a very vibrant, fiery, orangey red. This looks amazing on blondes. As long as you haven't got too much red in your skin or if you neutralise it with foundation, then it just really is a hot, hot, hot tomato. And against blonde hair, it looks incredible. This sort of colour looks great on Sienna Miller, for example. For less of a matte finish, because the Rouge d'Armani is quite matte, very long lasting, there is the Chanel one and this is incandescent and this is more of a satin it's one of the Rouge Allures so it's very sort of luxurious and satin and you can actually blot it down and sort of calm it down a little bit but it's a very very beautiful orangey and quite dramatic fiery red so next the cool tone reds and these are the bluish tones and, and the pinky reds now classically again these work very well with a cool toned skin but there is an exception because if you have a more olive or a yellow toned skin I actually like blue reds they pop out a lot more because they don't sit naturally with your skin in the way they would with a cool toned skin but if you want a real wow factor they really kind of jump out and um, for that reason I kind of like them with darker skin tones and with the more sort of yellowy olivey type skin tones if you've got the the confidence in a way to kind of get away with it. The most blue tone fabulous one is the Cherry Lush by Tom Ford and this makes your teeth look amazingly white which is another nice little side effect of the more bluey toned reds. They really do make your teeth look incredibly bright. Um, by Lancome 182 is another bluish more pinky red it's not as blue as the Tom Ford one but again it looks beautiful on lots of different skin tones it looks very very poppy on on a yellow skin but also beautiful on a cool tone 
The pinkest of all the reds that I like is this one, which is non-stop red. And it's one of the 14 hour super stay lipsticks by Maybelline. And this one looks really mashed up because this is my current favorite red. It's a very, very pinky red. This happens to be, I found this to be the longest lasting red lipstick I have ever used. And it's not drying at all. So I've been wearing that tons and tons. And um, it's what I like about it is it really, I can look a bit sallow once I've got my foundation on because I cover all my red and um, I blend in with my sort of more yellowy areas and it really pops the sallowness and that's I think what the pinky pinky reds are great for. You know, as, as, as lovely as they look on the cool toned skin, they really pop the sallowness of, of a yellowy skin and it just really brightens up my face so I've really got sort of used to using it but at the same time it sort of blends in with my skin tone. They have done a neutral version, which is another very bright, um, very intense red, which is by Maybelline too. So I've been wearing that one as well, but the pink one I've kind of got really into. Now on to the more neutral reds. And these are reds that more or less go with loads and loads and loads of different skin tones. Um, starting with the very classic Ruby Woo. It has a touch of blue, but it's it's one of those shades that seems to suit so many people it looks incredible on dark skin because it just pops unbelievably but it looks beautiful on a cool pale toned skin i use it on sallow skins yellow skins it's just one of those shades and it's a it's one of their retro pigments so it's incredibly matte if you want that real dita von t sort of lip that you can't really go wrong with ruby woo the next one is passion by chanel and this is just a beautiful it's again, it's a rouge law, so it's a satin, classic, neutral red that just suits lots and lots of people. Another one that I like is Fatal Red by Maybelline, and this is isn't one of their fourteen hour ones, so it's got um, a much creamier sort of shiny satiny finish, and that's a lovely, lovely color. A, a crazy color which has been around since nineteen fifty two is Revlon's Fire and Ice, and it's one of those shades that. It's almost like a neon red. If you want something that just is so shouty and so bright, it kind of looks orangey, but then on some people it looks really pink and on other people's it looks like a hot tomato. It's one of those, it's a, a color that just changes on all different skin tones, but it, it works well on so many different people. And I guess that's why it's been around since 1952 and they've never discontinued it probably, um, or they keep re reissuing it rather. And that's probably because um, it's just one of those interesting, changeable, fascinating reds really, that can look different on everyone, but sort of suits everyone as well. If you want a really shouty, bright, bright, bright red. Now I want to show you some of my favorite dark reds, and these are perfect for a much darker skin tone because some of the really bright ones just look like sort of stick on lips if your skin's very dark, they just don't work. And you want something richer and just more beautiful and more sort of yummy and got that sort of richness to it. So the first one that I really like for a darker skin tone is Red Lizard by NARS. And this is a matte one and it's just rich and gorgeous and full bodied. Um, the other one I really like is Russian Red by um, Mac and this will just look like an absolute classic red on a dark skin but it's also great for fair skin because it will just look like a very rich deep red um, it works on lots and lots of different skin tones that one it's a sort of a, a classic all-rounder um, another one that I like and this is another matte texture and this is really red by Revlon and this is one of their matte ones and this is just a beautiful rich red that looks again great on very dark skins and also works well on fairer skin tones. For something with a little bit more almost sensuality I love Chanel's Lover and this is a really dark bordeaux-y pinky red which looks lovely on, on a dark skin tone. Again it works on all different skin tones but it does particularly look nice on, on dark skin. It's got a sheen to it, a sort of satiny vibe and it's got a, a little bit of pearl. Not, not that much but it's just a very sort of luminous almost effect on the lips. That's very beautiful. Now if you're still feeling a bit frightened of red lipstick then there are lots and lots of sheer options. So it's 
again much easier to wear a sheer texture and it's much less it's much less high maintenance my favorite textures are dior addict extreme which is just a really lightweight it's not sheer that you don't see the color it has enough pigment in it but it has that much lighter weight to it and you see more of the skin texture the, the lip texture another one is the number seven sheer temptations and this is glam and this is a beautiful pinky red sheer which works on lots and lots of different skin tones and then there are there are so many gloss options i mean there's you know there's like lip balms that are tinted red like the nivea ones and every brand i think on the high street and premium houses all have red lip glosses so if you feel like you can't commit to red lips but you quite intrigued by them then maybe you should start with a red lip balm or a red lip gloss so i'm just going to apply a little bit of red lipstick myself and i've chosen the maybelline 14 hour one and this is ravishing rouge so it's not the pinky one that I've been wearing mainly. It's more of their classic neutral red that they've done. Simply because I found this to be the best long lasting one. Now you can apply it obviously straight from the bullet. If you've got perfect lips, then it's probably just as easy, but it doesn't always last as long as if you apply it with a lip brush. And I just find that when you use a lip brush, it lasts so much longer. Um, you need to really prep your lips before you can either use, if you've got very raggedy lips, then you can use like a lip exfoliator. I always like just to put balm on and then buff over them with a Q-tip and just roll it just to take off all the dry skin. And then just leave the little bit of balm that's on there while you do the rest of your makeup. And then by the time you get to your lips, it's sort of sunk in so they're not too glossy and not too balmy. And lipstick will sit on top of it quite well. So I always like to do with the first layer a very... Uh, almost hardly any lipstick on the brush and then really work it in so almost into all the nooks and crannies on your lips so you're not really thinking so much about the shape just on getting this color right down to the base of the of the lips and just follow the natural shape so once you've got it all over your lips and it's following the natural line, you can then either use a lip pencil or in the case of this lipstick, because it's very pigmented, it's quite, um, but it's very long lasting. I feel like I don't need a lip pencil and I want to make it a little bit more wearable. Like I'd wear this maybe even during the day. So I don't really want a sort of very hard line around the outside. So I'm going to start by just doing a few adjustments. So like this side of my lip is slightly straighter than the other side. And I normally thicken up or not thicken up, what's the word? Make my bottom lip a little bit fuller. And to do that, the best way is just to smile. Mm -hmm. Just kind of take it right. You're not going over the lips, but if you smile, you see you have a little bit of extra sort of space down there you can add color to. If you want to, you can do your lip pencil first and then even fill in the lips and then put lipstick on like for a night out if you want it to really be an amazing stain. Um, but I think generally most people who aren't makeup artists, if you've got the lipstick on first and then you look into the mirror, you can sort of get more of an idea of the shape you want. Whereas sometimes when you're just drawing the line and you haven't got anything else on your lips, um, unless you're, okay, you're brilliant at doing makeup, you kind of, you're not really sure what you're going for, what shape you're going to get. But once it's on, you really have a great idea of, um, you know, where you might want to make adjustments and things. So once you've got the shape exactly as you want it, there, there are lots of different ways to apply lipstick. Some people like to do one coat and then blot and then do a second coat. With certain not long lasting formulations, that's what I would definitely recommend. However, this one I've been wearing a lot recently, this this particular brand and this um, lipstick and I found just with one coat it's been absolutely amazing it's really long lasting and sometimes I just sort of finish it off get the shape how I want it and then I just kind of pat over the top so I'm not changing the shape at all just increasing the intensity a fraction as I say you can be as high maintenance as you want there are so many different ways you can apply a red lipstick but I think the main thing is that you want it to be because if it's a strong strong red 
your lips need to look a good shape and if you need to do corrections whether it be with a lip pencil or with a lip brush then put the extra effort in because if you're going to wear red lipstick you may as well wear it fabulously now for the rest of your face with a red lip you'll find sometimes when you put the red lip on you'll need to do blusher so I would wait until you've got your red lip on to finish your makeup because you'll suddenly think oh my god you know I look completely drained and I need more color in my cheeks or you might think oh, I need more mascara or you might think it's fine everyone is different you have to wear it your way I personally like it when the rest of the makeup isn't too strong because red lips on their own are such a statement that you almost don't need to compete with it but I know some people look incredible with smoky eyes and red lips everyone is different and also it's your level of comfort as well but I just think red lips are a, it's a timeless classic it's been around for a long time it's going to be around for the i'm sure the rest of eternity and it's something that looks great at any age i think you can carry it off and it's an instant pick me up if you're feeling a bit down or the weather's you know if it's raining and it just feels dull and horrible outside you put on a red lipstick and it instantly cheers you up not just your face but your mood as well so i hope you enjoyed this i hope it was helpful and i'll see you soon